I'm Saul Kirsch with Double Alpha Academy here at Magnus Sports in Las Vegas. And we're talking with Max about his training regimen. Max today being the best guy in the game, really. How do you get there? What do you do on a week to week basis to build your skills to where you can do what you can do? Well, I think it all started many years ago. Um, I wouldn't say now is just about fine tuning, but I would say I definitely put in a great deal of the work 20 years ago and continue to work through the game. Uh, so now where, where, my, where my role is as a pro shooter, I don't always get time to go to the range and always get time to shoot because there's other obligations and duties, whether it be appearances um, or anything else that can come from that, working on products. Uh, but so what I do now to keep, keep focus and keep on point is really I have a personal trainer in the gym. I make sure I'm in the gym a minimum of two, three days per week, working on specific drills that are going to make me better for shooting. Um, but more importantly, just having a plan around that. So it, you know, I have a, a full month, a full, a full calendar year. I see exactly where my matches are, what I'm doing. I see exactly what my um, personal life has in store, whether it be vacations or uh, kids' birthday parties and those types of things. So I see those things, and I and I start filling in the blanks of when I can train. Once I have all that filled out, then I kind of go from a year calendar to a a quarterly calendar to a monthly calendar, weekly and daily, and I just work myself really it's kind of a boring life I guess but I make sure I have a, a platform that I'm gonna give myself the ability to do the best that I can do with what I have the time to work with. How important is that annual program you, re you reckon? I, I believe it's very important um, you know last year I changed something just out of this light uh, slightly changed something and I didn't shoot the Florida Open um, because I had shot the world shoot previous the year before at the end of 2014 and I was on a high from that and um, after the world shoot I had to go do a bunch of work for training to because what happened for the world shoot let's just say real quickly is I I worked really hard early part of the year, lots of courses, lots of training, make as much money as I could for my family, and then I took three or four months off before the world shoot to do nothing but just train myself, and then afterwards I had to continue to work more. Um, so what happened was my year just kind of kept running, and, and I got really tired, and I wanted to take a break, so I didn't shoot the Florida Open, and that changed my entire year last year. It just threw me off. It wasn't, I needed that match. I didn't realize how much I needed to have some really big level three match to push me, get right. me going in the year. So they, To be at a higher level earlier on. Exactly, and that way it carries you through the rest of the year um, and really kind of puts you in that mode that you need to be in. So I, it's very important to make sure you have an annual plan in place um, and sometimes deviate from it and try new things. Um, and I found that trying that new thing didn't work for me. So that's why this year I'm going back to that match. And when you do go out to the range to shoot, how often do you do that? How many times a week on average would you say you actually hit the range to train? Yeah. And how many rounds do you shoot when you go out? Okay, so if I'm home the entire week, I'm going to shoot three or four days that week. Um, I don't go every day, um, mainly because I want to be home too. And when I'm on the road a lot and I travel a lot, if I'm on the range, it's no different than if I'm, you know, gone. So I just, I go to the range when my kids, uh, when their schedule allows it really, if they're in school. Um, but if I go three to four days a week, I'm shooting six to 800 rounds per day. Just depends on what I'm, what I'm doing and what I'm training. Uh, if I'm shooting steel challenge, I'm shooting probably more than that, maybe 1200 rounds per day. Um, and you take someone out to help load the magazines for steel I do, challenge? I do. I'm very fortunate, very lucky. My father, he, um, he owns his own construction maintenance business in the French Quarter, and he's able to uh, kind of get away when he wants to. And he's slowing down now anyway. He's doing less work there, and he's doing more work with me. Um, so he's on the range with me pretty much every day, loading mags, painting targets, and, um, and helping and assisting in any way. That, that must be very valuable when you're out there. Absolutely, very valuable. So if you're training three, four times on the range, and you, you're going to the gym a number of times as well, what about the mental preparation? What about being sure that when you get to the big match, you're mentally prepared to perform at your best. Yeah, I think, um, you know, going back to it, I think it, for me, it's, I'm, I'm a realist. I want results. I want to know what I'm doing. I, I've tried it in the past, you know, trying to do the Zen stuff where I talk to myself and tell myself how great I am. And it never really worked for me. Um, I was always about go out there, you know, beat your idols. Um, and, and show the proof is in the pudding. You can do it. You are capable and you will do it again. Um, and that's kind of uh, my mindset going into it. But the mental preparation is ahead of time. I, I, visualization is, is big. I use it in business today. I use it in shooting. Um, for me, visualization allows me the ability to be there before I'm there and, and kind of calm the mind. So um, I do research ahead of time where the range is going to be, what's the location, have I been there before, what's the best hotel, just those little things like that that are going to put your mind at ease. Right. So you can be calm and confident that you've done everything and you know everything and you're ready. Exactly. It's something I learned from you, you know, when, you know, when anxiety goes up, your performance goes down. I've heard you say that before. And, and that's a, 
that's very true. You need to be so, able to control that. So you try to control that anxiety in some kind of form or fashion. And for me, that mental preparation is just as big as, as a physical preparation, if not bigger. Because what I find is when I go to the range and I train and things are easy. You're, you're there, nobody's with you, there's no pressure. Do you always train alone? I do. I always train by myself. Is that your preference? Or if you had a really good training buddy, you think that would be better? That would be better. Um, but one, one training buddy is all you need. Uh, I'm fortunate I have my father. He helps me. He doesn't shoot with me. Very rarely does he shoot with me. For the, if we're going to a match together, he'll train with me. But for the most part, he's there loading mags and watching me, making sure that I'm doing the things that I need to do. Um, but you know, before that, when I was in the Army, I hired on Travis Tomasi. And that was the best hire I made. That was, it is no coincidence that in 2004, when I hired him, I won my first nationals and then went on to win steel challenges and world shoots and, and multiple nationals. And there's you no- guys train together all the time. We train together all the time. And there's no coincidence that he won nationals and world shoot after we got together. We both had talent, but when you put us together, we pushed one another in a way that no one else could have. And it was a positive push. It wasn't of, I'm gonna beat him, I don't like him. It was, I wanna see you do well but I'm gonna beat you so that way you can go to that next level with me. Um, and today we're very appreciative for the, what we did for one another. Very hard, especially at a high level, to find someone like that, it that is. you can compete with and still remain you know, friendly enough to be able to That's be supporting key. and pushing each That's other. It's like, you know, how many people can you actually go out there and train with and trust? So the cool thing was uh, we found after a while that why are we beating each other up? You go shoot standard, I shoot open, and we can work together and we can dominate together. And that's where um, I think we were able to, to really do more than what we were ever capable of because we weren't worried about beating one another any longer. We just wanted to see each other win the match that we were shooting. And when you're out on the range, when you're practicing, do you try to set up more elaborate stages, more really difficult, complex stuff, or do you just focus on the small elements and do a lot of repetitions? Yeah, small elements, lots of repetition is what I focus on. Um, I'm very specific in my training. Uh, it's geared to whatever specific weakness I may have. Uh, it's very focused, specific training. So in other words, if, I'm, if I go to a match and I'm having issues with barricades or leaning around a position, I set up very awkward positions at home and I might shoot them 300 rounds worth. Rather than setting up a large field course that's 32 rounds, I can run that course maybe eight times for 300 rounds or nine times for 300 rounds, and I'm only gonna touch on the barricade maybe 20 rounds out of that drill, out of the entire drill. So you go out and you practice different things each time, more or less, focusing on, on, on your weaknesses, on something that you feel needs work. Exactly, I have what I call my non-negotiables that I always train on, right. my essentials, you know, recoil management, draw, reload, transition. things that you do every time you go to the range. Correct, that's the every time. But then there's also gonna be another side of that where I say, okay, I'm gonna spend a couple hundred rounds on this and a couple hundred rounds on that. And then next time I come back, I'll do my non-negotiables again, uh, some great recoil management drills I got from you, 20 alpha, triple six, things like that, that we've always done, and then I keep adding to that puzzle. Um, I'm not blessed with my own firing range in my backyard, even though I live in Louisiana, and you think of the bayou and the crocodiles and the, the I, I'm, I'm a city boy. <laughs> I don't have a range in my backyard, so when I go to the range, I don't have much time. I need to make sure I have what I need and, and I prepare and I can get there, get in and get out as quickly as possible. So everything I need is in the back of my truck. I typically use three or four, five targets maximum and a couple pieces of steel at a training session. It takes me 10, 15 minutes to set up, maybe 20 minutes to tear down to pick up brass and whatnot. And the rest of the time is spent shooting on specific skill sets rather than setting up large elaborate courses. And uh, you shoot open and production as well, uh, quite competitively. Do you practice both when you go out? Or do you focus periodically on one division and then the other? Do you ever mix it? It depends. I do mix it from time to time and it's not very effective, to be honest. Um, I only do it because I'm in a time crunch and I need to. For instance, if I'm training for the steel challenge, there's times when I'll shoot all three divisions, rim fire, open, and production. And when I do that, it's very difficult because the, the rigs are different. Um, you know, the guns are obviously different. The calibers are different. So just the, the burden of bringing everything right. is, is a burden. But I do it only when I need to, and I don't find it to be very effective. So I try my very best to separate things uh, daily. Are you one of those shooters who analyzes a lot of the information that he gets from the range? I mean, do you keep a shooting diary? And then do you come back and go, all right, let me think over my session and take mental notes and actual notes to analyze what you're doing, or is it just more of a mental process for you? Yeah, I think a little bit of both. It's definitely more so of a mental process now for me to the way I do things. I don't keep a diary any longer every day per se, but I will take notes of what's going on. Um, smartphones nowadays are pretty pretty convenient. A lot, of tools out. a lot of tools out there, lots of different apps and whatnot. So as I'm shooting, as I'm doing something, I can maybe plug it in and say, you know, I had an issue with this, or this was my best time on this particular drill at this particular distance. So I do keep track of those. Um, for the most part though, is, is I just want to 
keep track of what I'm doing well, but also what I'm doing wrong, so I can take those things better, uh, better prepare myself next time. And over a year, if you're building, you know, if it's a world shoot year or it's a major match year, how many rounds do you reckon you actually shoot in practice here? Yeah, I probably shoot a lot less than people think, um, and maybe I shoot more than I think, um, but I, I typically shoot probably 70 to 80,000 rounds a year. There was a time I was shooting a lot more than that. Um, before I had kids and before I had responsibilities. Um, but now, you know, things change. There's, as, as we mentioned before, being a pro shooter is not just about pulling the trigger. There's so much more that goes to it. There's shows, there's uh, demonstrations, there's product development, um, appearances, lots of things have to happen and there's only so much time in a day to make those things happen. And of course, we all have families. Um, so yeah, I probably shoot 70 to 80,000 rounds per year. Yeah, and you gotta make sure those are quality rounds, you know, just going out there and shooting an extra 500 just to say you've shot 100,000 this year, doesn't necessarily make it better training or better practice. Nah, Exactly. Yeah, you know, just as well as I do, it's like, uh, you know, the, it's the quantity, uh, I'm sorry, it's the quality of our training rather than the quantity of what we're actually doing. Do you, would, would you reckon that 50,000 plus would be the minimum amount to be really world-class competitive in this game? Um, I think you can, yeah, I, I would say so. I would for say most shooters, I would anyway. say for most shooters, yeah. Um, you know, 50,000 plus is definitely going to keep you competitive, but really it's the dry fire that you put in before those 50,000 rounds, I think is what separates the, the good shooters from the great shooters and the experiences and the mental game and everything else that comes with it. There's sure. so much with it, but uh, I think if you're not out there, yeah, pressing the trigger, you know, 4,000 rounds a month, you're probably not going to be where guys like us are at because yeah, we've got to build the skill set. Right, we've done it. We've shot millions of rounds literally already. Um, so if you want to get to that point, you have to continue to go through the repetition over and over and over again to turn the subconscious mind into doing things that you want it to do on demand. Do you make a point every year of having downtime? Do you have a month or two where you don't shoot at all? How important do you think that is? I think it's very important. In any sport, and in our sport in particular, is so repetition, so steel challenge, uh, and even IPSC to a certain degree. I break things down into 12 certain skill sets that I really work within, um, and it becomes monotonous. It does. Um, uh, and if you travel as much as I do, and um, I think anybody in any field, if you work as hard as you do, you need a break at some point. If you don't get a break, you hit burnout. And I remember, um, in fact, you and I were training together back then. It was in 2002. Uh, we were at... Um, just a couple of years ago. Yeah, just a couple <laughs> years ago. In 20, you know, 2002, it was Bend, Oregon, I think it was. It was Bend, Oregon. Anyway, it was a national, one of the nationals way back then. And I remember competing in the nationals and not wanting to be there. Yeah. That was the worst feeling. And I, we had the world shoot the week after right, or something. Right. And I'm thinking, I don't want to be here because I put, every, I, I, I put too much into yeah, leading up to that. To it's a horrible place to be. And if you don't want to be on the range, you shouldn't be there. You know, you, you should be the most hungry person trying to, trying to get that championship. And, and that's, I learned a lot that year about how I train and what I do differently. So I think a break, going back to what you're saying, I think a break is extremely important. I try to get my very best I try to take from Thanksgiving until SHOT Show, which gives us about two months. Right. If I can take those two months where, yes, I still stay in shape, um, I still stay current, maybe I go to the range every now and then, but I'm not training. I'm, I'm not even shooting my open guns or my match guns probably. I'm probably shooting something with my kids or just kind of having fun. Um, but I think it's very important. I find when I go back to the range, I'm more hungry, dedicated, refreshed, recharged, if you will, and ready to go and ready to get back to work and get better.